Hello, and welcome to the Doc Exchange, a real stories podcast in partnership with the Grierson Trust. Every week, I'll ask a new filmmaker or filmmaking team about three documentaries connected by a single theme that have made a meaningful impression on their work and life. Things are definitely getting worse. All the businesses is closing down. This was Heister's Fort Lift Trucks, and it's empty as desolate land. The only shop that's busy is the job centre. That's that. BBC making a new documentary series. If you're working and finds it a little bit difficult to stay afloat, they want to hear from you. New documentary series on the real story behind Working Britain. If you're in work and fighting to stay afloat... Last year, local radio stations up and down the country played adverts asking people to phone in if they were struggling to make ends meet, despite having a job. You know, we've got nothing in the bank. We haven't even got a pension. We're doomed. Calls came in from all over the UK. Working absolutely stupid hours. Frequently, skin tone payday, month after month. Two paychecks away from disaster or being homeless. I can't afford to keep living like this. Many asked not to be identified. Please don't tell them who I am. But some wanted to share their stories. There's just a massive gap in there between living expenses and what you can actually earn. And nobody should have to be doing two and three jobs just to feed the kids. We followed nine families for a year as their financial futures hung in the balance. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. Hell no! Being broke is not the same as being broken. So what does just about managing really mean for millions of us from all walks of life and from all over Britain? I've just got to keep going. Keep buggering on. That's what Churchill said. Poor oh, man must be freezing. I've never seen anything like it. All these statues. Is that Wales over there? Don't talk about Wales, I just want to cry. I want to go home to be with my family and the grandkids. I've just got everything there. Errol is from Penegroes, a small village in North Wales. But when the council cut her local services, she was forced to leave her home behind and come to England to look for work. It's such a lovely little village. Good community, friends and family around you. It was a lovely life I had there. The only problem was there's not a lot of work there. The buses, the council started not paying for some services. I couldn't work a Sunday morning. I was paying for taxis home late at night. And I'd worked all day and all weekends for about £17 if I was lucky. One day I decided, I picked up a bag and I decided to go and find work somewhere. I just had enough of it all. Errol moved to Liverpool where she now rents a small one-bedroom flat and works up to 60 hours a week in the kitchen of a Japanese restaurant. It's a bit of a shock to the system because I've got so much space in my own home. I've got a 26-foot living room and I'm, I feel a bit um, claustrophobic, but it'll have to do for now. Um, this is the Dorothea Quarry, um, where I spent all my childhood it used to be stunning when I was a little girl and um, there used to be um, big, massive purple flowers everywhere. These are some of the grandkids. I feel so guilty not being around for them. Uh, I really do, but it was a matter of um, I had to because um, 
I wouldn't have been able to pay for my house. Um, there was not enough work for me. I always walk, walk to work. Could take me about 45 minutes. Errol earns £7.50 an hour at the restaurant, which is in line with the national living wage. But after she's paid the bills, it doesn't leave her with anything left over. Not taking the bus? No, I can't afford the luxury of having buses. It take, if I took buses every day, you're talking about wor working maybe for one hour to pay for a bus, and a taxman doesn't seem to realise um, things like this. That is a lot of money per week and a lot of money per month. I work in a Japanese restaurant. I've been there for a year now. The only problem is it's a zero-hour contract. I don't know from week to week how many hours I'm going to get. I went into work about 11 in the morning, and it's now after 12, I think, at night. You have to take the hours while you're offered them because they might not be there January. My sleep pattern is all over the place. You have a job, but you don't know when you'll work or if you'll be paid. That's the reality for a million Brits employed on zero hours contracts. New figures from the Office of National Statistics suggest 910,000 people were on zero hours contracts in 2016. A race to the bottom on pay, job security and workplace rights. How did we get to this stage and how should we tackle the problem? In Wales, Errol used to earn a little extra money by making Christmas wreaths to sell to her friends. And even though she's moved away, she's keen to try and keep the moneymaker going. Oh, I've just seen a lovely variegated holly tree. It's just a bit dangerous getting there. I don't know how I'm going to get there. She's looking for conifers, pine cones and holly wherever she can find them. What a good find. I'll risk all just to get some of this holly. I have never, ever seen so much nice holly in all my life. Oh, my God, it's the cops. Oh, my God, somebody must have reported me. I, I just have to come back when it's dark and nick them then. Errol has set herself a target of making 70 wreaths, but she's taking a risk. She doesn't yet know whether her former friends and neighbours will still want to buy them from her. My mum always used to say when we were kids, do you think money grows on trees? I think money does grow on trees. The worst thing, I had to pretend to my mum that I was going to Liverpool to work for a weekend, but I knew that I was going forever. Um, it was a bit of a nightmare. Having to lie to somebody, but... And if she, she knew where I lived, she wouldn't sleep a wink. <laughs> two jobs, so I'm in 20 grand debt, so I'm 30 years old, self-employed, I've worked every single day, worked my ass, I've worked for peanuts, work um, overtime, and I'm still living at home. All I'm doing is working, 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 but, and actually life itself. I can't see myself getting out. I'm putting myself in the ground. North Ayrshire is one of the poorest places in the UK. High levels of unemployment and deprivation means that a man born here is likely to die seven years earlier than a man born in Kensington and Chelsea. For local funeral director, Kevin, many of the people he buries 
haven't even made it to retirement age. I want us to work to our 67. And the people we are burying is not even hitting 70. There's nobody in the box, strictly for the photo shoot. Things are definitely getting worse. All the businesses is closing down. This was Heiser's Fort Lift Trucks and it's empty as desolate land. The only shop that's busy is the job centre. That's it. And there's no many jobs there. Death has entered the whole of the county. Death of the companies. It's as if we've forgotten about. The funeral directors is kind of bucking the trend and the fact that everybody dies and everybody requires a funeral director. As we go into the office, you can see it's not a big building. And this is the preparation room. This is where coffin rack. You never know when you might need them. We go through that in a couple of weeks. This particular bag is a disaster bag. And you can scoop the remains into it if they were hot by a train, etc. So that's just ready to lift at a moment's notice. People's coming to me for a cheaper job to get done. The austerity is there and it's really, it's real. You know, even people working full time has got no money. I feel sorry for them, personally. Right, come on, shower. You're playing, you're gonna get in the shower first. Come on, you can play outside. Kevin works over 100 hours a week to make sure his partner Zoe right, and their three-year-old son Dax have enough to live on. My grandmother, etc. They had a job when they left the school. There was loads and loads of jobs. In my father's generation, the, the work started to dry up in the late 70s, early 80s. I came along in 1985, there was very little left. And when I left school, I became self-employed. And I've, I've grew a business from zero, most of the time single-handedly. We're working hard. Everything I'm doing today is for him in the future. Although Kevin's cut price funeral business is booming, the margins are very low and he doesn't make much money from them. So he's decided to diversify. He's opened a taxi company and a small cafe outside the funeral parlour. In the shop we sell a range of hot and cold food, ice cream. We also do a delivery service to your house. This is my partner Zoe, always hard at work, always smiling. Take the breakfast off and that please right. and get us a crepe out. Yeah. Get the macaroni cheese in. <laughs> Half past ten in the morning, yeah. strawberry Sundays and macaroni cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday nice is a day where everybody's hungover and they all order breakfast at the same time, which means we end up with us. It's a nightmare. As if he wasn't busy enough, Kevin also works as a mechanic, specialising in cut price MOTs. With four businesses running, his goal is to make enough money this year to start putting a little aside for his son's future. So every single thing that people require, MOT, death, food, I cover all the bases, i.e. working, Every day, God sends. If Kevin can give me anything, that would be more of his time. And he can give me everything, he just hasn't got much time. To. And it's the most precious thing. Because you don't know when your time is going to end or, or somebody you love. Mm -hmm. I'm coming up 40 now, and I just think you start thinking about things. You work for a normal life, but then you've got to work like hell and then you end up your life's doesn't that normal at all because all you're doing is working. That's the way we are, we just we get on with it and that's it. All across the UK, people are working harder for longer 
and for less money. Five and a half million public sector workers have had their pay rises frozen or capped at 1% for seven years. I wanted to be a nurse because my daughter was critically ill when she was born and I was observing everything that was going on around me, how they had to keep her alive. And I thought, you know, I can do this, actually. This is something I can do. Lorraine works as a senior intensive care nurse and earns around £28,000 a year. We're having services removed from us. You know, A&E departments are closing down. There's now one A&E department from four hospitals. Penny pinching all the time. What can we cut next? Oh, let's cut the NHS. Taking into account inflation and the rising cost of living, she's worse off now than she was in 2010. I'm on online banking checking that I've not gone overdrawn because then the banks are charging you. I think it's something like three pounds. It's a lot of money. I can buy a chicken with three pounds, so why should I give it the bloody bank? As well as having a stressful job, Lorraine also looks after her mother, Jo, who was seriously ill earlier in the year. Listen, we still look gorgeous at 76. Seven. Oh, no, not yet. And I've seen her come home that exhausted, that tired. She could have fell asleep over the tea. And you've gone, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Recently, Lorraine has started taking on extra shifts at nights and weekends because her mm. partner, Keith, has seen his work as a pest controller dry up over the winter months. Keith loves corned beef, so a packet of corned beef was 99 pence. It's in the boot, love. It's £1.33 now. But my wages haven't gone up in eight years. It's just incredible. I'm about £77, I think it was. Got some offers, though. For a large chicken, £2.69. More chicken for... 20 pence per packet of it. Even the leeks, and they're usually over a pound. There's me other striper. <laughs> Striping is my life. <laughs> Striping is reduced prices, basically. To help her stay in control over what she spends, Lorraine pays for everything with cash. So if you've got your cash, missus. And once a month, she collects housekeeping from her two children and her partner, Keith. I split it so that I've got £100 a week for food. And then I save for Christmas presents. There's another 100 to go in there. You've just took money off us and gone, yeah. that's, for, that's yeah, for Christmas presents. Yeah, it is as well, I know yeah. it. No, 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 Christmas present no. for? Hang on a minute, I put into this as well, you know. No, so you I'll buy a third of your own No, 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 you don't understand. I could see a light bulb on his head when you said it. That housekeeping goes to everything, so I have to put money away for the dog, for the cats, for the bloody mortgage. I have to think about everything. All you have to think about is handing over your money every month. Yeah, I, I haven't had that privilege like you and your previous to just do what you wanted to do. You know, we're going to New York next week. We'll just go to New York. And now enough's enough. Don't like this conversation. No. Hi, um, I'm 45. Up until 2015, I was in a 20-year relationship, which ended, so I moved in with my parents. 
at 45, where I still am staying. It seems like a very far off, distant dream to even rent somewhere. I'm a single mum, I'm 32. I have struggled constantly just to keep us afloat. I've worked full time, I've worked part time. There isn't a part of money, there isn't any savings. You know, everything is really tightly budgeted. I think life is just made really quite difficult for single parents. Okay. I'm coming, mummy. Okay, oh, come on, shoes on. Did you do your pack lunch? Okay, oh, come on, we need to go. I'm coming right now. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You haven't got that much time. Daniel, walk with me. Don't pull me. You guys are doing very well. Let's go, let's go. Bye, Gracie. Bye, Daniel. Bukala is a single mum. She migrated from Nigeria 20 years ago and has been working in the UK ever since on temporary work visas. Oh, my God, I was struggling at work. It's like you're still working, you know? to support herself and her 10-year-old daughter, Venus. She works for an agency who find her shifts as a health worker. I've been working in the care sector for almost 14 years. And I'm currently working for Elderly Day Centre. She's just finished an eight-hour night shift. I choose when I work because of my daughter. So now I'll come from night shift Drop out of school by 8.45 and start my college by 9 a.m. She's only had a couple of hours sleep in the last two days. And now she's got a full day of college where she's trying to improve her qualifications by studying social policy. Bearing in mind the nature of these eating disorders and these types of magazine articles, what's the target uh, readership? Everybody's body is different. So people have fast metabolism or high metabolism. So no matter what they eat anyway, they can't put it on. You can't copy that. You can't no, imitate you can't. that. What else have we got on here? College is a bit hard because when I finish college, I have to go straight to work. If I don't have to work, it will be easier. It will give me time to read and other stuff. But as it is, I'm struggling to keep up. But I have to keep up because I must pass and I have a deadline. The more educated or the better educated you are, the better you have a good job. Does that make sense? And I need to set a good example for my child. If I'm saying to her, you must have a better life, you must educate yourself, you must study, I must do the same thing. Otherwise, I'm just preaching and not practicing it, isn't it? I want a better life. Bukala earns around £350 a week, but the hours are unsociable, and it's not enough to pay for the childcare she needs. Why were you trying? Tonight, she's working another night shift, so she's asked her friend Debbie to look after Venus. Hi, Mommy. How are you? Uh, I miss you. Hi, Sitin. Better get your butt out of there now and go for a brush your teeth. You have exactly two minutes. Now. She's a very hard-working mother. The bad thing is that she's been, like, working every single day. But there's night shift, there's morning shift, and there's day shift. She normally just does day shift and night shift. I love doing this. I love what I do, but my work don't pay me enough. Our father, who works in heaven? I worry so much. I, I don't sleep. But because I need to work to make a living, even when I'm shattered and tired, I will still get my black ass off bed and still go to work to make that money. Thank you, Lord. Oh, sweet up. I slept for four hours last night. I went to bed around 2, 2.30. Mm -hmm. I got up by 6, 6.30. There's a time Venus actually said to me, she was crying. She said, I don't want you to go to work. You don't spend any time with me. I'm not spending time with my daughter. The only bonding time we have is weekend. And even weekend, I'll go to work at night on Sunday. You sleepy? 
As well as paying her regular rent and bills, every three years, Buckler has to find around £2,000 to renew her temporary work visa. This time around, she's decided to apply for permanent residence. But while she's waiting to hear back from the Home Office, and her status is uncertain, her agency have warned her that they may not be able to give her any more shifts. When I called the Home Office this morning, and I explained the situation, I spoke to a lady called Claire. She said to me that they shouldn't stop me from working. That because the Home Office has not refused me anything, you know, so my employer should not stop me from working. That what my employer needs to do is to call the Home Office and give that reference. They will then tell them, yes, she can work, and whatever my employer needs, they will give it to them. I didn't even think they're going to stop me from working because it's a normal routine that I do every three years. When something is going to be good, it will get tough, but it will get better. And I believe, and from there I've upgraded myself to myself to say, you know, if I believe I've hit the bottom, after bottom, Nick, there's nowhere else to go. It can't get worse than that. Christmas is approaching and Errol has been given more and more shifts at work. The extra money is welcome, but it doesn't leave her any time during the day to forage for the materials she needs to make the wreaths. The trees I was um, getting conifer off has disappeared, so I'm a bit behind. She's only got two weeks left to finish all 70 of her wreaths. What sort of numbers are we on at the moment? Well, I've done about 40, but I'm seriously running out of materials. I can't seem to find any berries anywhere. Oh, I found some berries. <laughs> it started off just um, to get a bit of extra money to buy the toys for the kids. And, and then it just became what I did every Christmas. I won't, won't get any to any debts over Christmas because it'll all be paid for by, by the wreaths I sell. Sorry, is it, is it your garden? Sorry. Yeah, yeah it is actually. Oh, oh I'm yeah. so sorry. I just thought it was a park, you see. Yeah. Well, we can take whatever you want. So oh, I don't he's the owner of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so embarrassing. I'm so embarrassed. I thought it was a park. With a mortgage in Wales and rent to pay in Liverpool, Errol doesn't have much spare cash for socialising. I'm going to the station to meet a friend I haven't seen for about, it could be 35 years. And I've just found out on, on Facebook that uh, we live nearby. But tonight, she's meeting an old friend. This is the first time in six months that she's been out for a drink. Hiya, Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Grand baby, I'm not going to be grandchildren. Green coffee after that, we did coffee after that, direct tree blooming. The other day, get that we are doing it. Why do you coffee after that? A job was once seen as a guarantee against poverty, but an ever greater number of people in employment are going without some of the basic necessities. Families earning the national living wage are being left short by up to £6,000 a year. So the cuts, you would argue, will hit rural areas far worse because, because as you say, they're starting at a, a much lower point. Yes, that's right. The unemployment rate in Kevin's hometown in Scotland is a third higher than the national average. It means that Kevin's cut-price funeral business mostly deals with families who are living below the breadline. Can you discuss Dad's funeral? Yeah. 15, 60 is my fee, which is on the paperwork. The 950 is your cremation fee. Mm -hmm. You are on a zero-hour contract. Yeah. 
lonely child. It's pretty difficult to say the least. I just don't think that I should just be like, well, I've not got the money and just give up. I feel like mm. I need to at least give him a good send off. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, how much money did your dad have in his bank, do you know? £200. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> so the assets that he's left is his record collection, mm -hmm. his motorbike. I've got somebody in Kilmarnock that he was like you could get probably about two grand okay. for it. That would really help you with this. I know, I know. <laughs> If they don't have the money, there's not much I can do. And the environmental health will just dispose of the body. Because it's in the contract that the, the customer signs. Uh, the funeral fee must be paid two days in advance of the funeral, or else the funeral will not go ahead. So here's an example of an account that I've let a family pay up after the funeral. They paid the, the deposit at £950, no problem, and then they've paid me up £50 a week, £30, £25 a week, and the, the outstanding balance is uh, £260. But no much point chasing it. Very poor people. Kevin's determination to save money for his son means he's just taken on a fifth job. He's earning an extra £40 a night, delivering for Mama's fish and chip shop. Hi, Paul. Oh, yeah. 16.40, please. It's no great wages, but it's better than sitting in the house. You won't get anything sitting in the house. Hi, Paul. 9.70, please. There you go, mate. I'm tired, I. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Uh, I'm just looking forward to getting in and get my dinner. I got up in the morning, have a shower, put clean clothes on and go back to the grindstone. Come in, have a cup of tea, eat my dinner, fall asleep. Sometimes with a chip in my hand. The history of working people trying to get control of some of their own time. You know, people actually did manage to get a 40 hour week uh, and it's gone. We need to get a better work-life balance. In the countries that have got the shorter working week, we tend to have lower unemployment and better growth. I work over a hundred hours a week. I don't do it for the love of the money because there's no profit in it. I still need to pay my mortgage on my garage. It's a thousand pounds a month. I'm over 30 grand a year in car insurance for the taxis. Buildings, public liability, road risk, cover. So that's the reason I've got to work over a hundred hours a week. Six o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night, seven days a week. Just for to swim against the tide. And unless you're strong, you'll not make it, and you'll chuck the towel in. In Cambridge, Buckler is still waiting to hear from the Home Office about her application for permanent residency in the UK. But it's taking so long that her agency have now told her that they can't give her any more shifts. So, technically, I can't work. I don't have any work, any source of income. As of now, I don't have any rights to be here according to them. <laughs> Go to school, be with Venus, do whatever other jobs I could do to give me cash or not. And, Cause I still have to pay my rent by next week. I still have to pay my council tax by next week. I feel so tired. <sighs> She's having to look for work herself and this means she hasn't got time to attend college anymore. So she's being forced to study at home. You now people think I'm indestructible. People think that when you hit me, you beat a brick wall and you bounce back. But sometimes I have days that it becomes too much. And sometimes when I'm down, you know, when I'm sitting in my house and I cry, and I would doubt myself and I would check myself, then when I finish, I'll say to myself, it is okay. 
opinions, please. Tell me what happened at school today that you were crying? Because I, what I don't get from all of this that you're telling me is why you were crying. What exactly happened that you were crying? They all forgot about me when we were walking back. It made me feel lonely because I don't have any friends. I understand that you are unhappy and you feel left out, but if you don't give people a chance, why should they give you a chance? We, we have this conversation every time. You keep trying. Enough crying. Okay? Hey, that doesn't look like smile. Are you smiling? I'm not sure if you're smiling or crying. Look at me. <laughs> Mommy, it is okay. Whose company should you enjoy most? My company? You should learn to play with who must? Myself. When I see her like that, it bothers me, but she needs to be tough, she needs to be strong. You have to be strong. She has to be strong. Life is not easy, it's tough. She wants to be like her mom, and I said to her, I don't want you to be like me, I would like it to be better than me. My mom's childhood, I'm pretty sure it would have been tough. Because mommy used to live in Africa, and it would have been very hard back then. You have to work and 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 work. Even when you're very young, I think. I want my mum to be happy and that she won't have to work as hard anymore and she'll get paid very well. But if mummy doesn't go to work, who's going to pay for food? So you have to think about it some way. Sometimes you just have to go through it. Lorraine knows all about the stresses that money worries can bring. After her previous relationship broke down, she struggled to pay her mortgage and her house was nearly repossessed. Now, once again, money problems are affecting her relationship with her partner, Keith. It turns out that for the last few months, he's been providing lunch money for his eldest child. And you can't just go throw money away when you've not been working and he's still paying his maintenance, which is good. But he knows that the fridge and the freezer are full of reduced stuff. So if he thinks he can just hand over 20 pounds, it's gonna cause friction between us and it has done. So I ended up flipping my lid, <laughs> as they'd say. I felt so betrayed, but now he's not here. He's gone to his mum's. So um, today's been a pretty shit day. Yesterday was a shit day. Hopefully it'll work out. He's been in touch. You can't live without you. I know, but you've got to. Well, you, you've, you've got, got to, to talk. talk. Yeah. You've got to talk. But you've got to make decisions as a couple and not as a single person. And if you want to make decisions as a single person, live a single life. And yeah. Well, um, you sort of peace talks and nobody says nothing. Well, and I blame you both, and you know I do. He said um, he thought it was very final. He thought it was? Yeah. You've got to have a row to Don't. make sure that the magic's still there when you make up. I understand all of that. So he's moved everything out? No, I moved it out. Well, Never mind him. Out. I bloody moved over. it out. Recently, life has been particularly stressful for Lorraine. She was on duty in the intensive care unit at the Royal Infirmary the night of the Manchester bombings. This morning I woke up to a text message off him. I am aware the strain you've been under for the last year and I was so proud of the way you handled that. It affected everybody.
Police now believe the attack was carried out by one man. A number of children are among the dead. When it's children, it feels so different. It's really difficult. And I asked Keith and I asked my curls and they said that when they talk to me, sometimes my head's elsewhere. And they know that my mind's like a bit screwed up really, to be honest with you. But it's my job, it's what I do, it's what I've got to do. going to come tonight and hopefully we'll be able to sort something out but if we're always going to have this conflict is it better to say enough's enough now mm. where have you dug that up from i was in my wardrobe huh? yeah. i love you all right Both got lessons to uh, learn. I've got to be more communi communicative. And I've got to be what? Uh, more patient or stroke less um, volatile. Yeah. From now on, I'll be a lot more open about stuff like that. I won't make that mistake again. If you're faced with that scenario or a similar scenario again, what are you going to do? I'll speak to you, Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. Steady on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a story repeated across England. Subsidy is cut, fares rise, passenger numbers fall, routes become uneconomic. Like many places, especially in the countryside, services have been scaled back to save money. Campaign for Better Transport says four in ten local authorities have cut bus funding this year. Bus users are often people on lower income whose wages are lower than they were ten years ago. <laughs> I am absolutely shattered. I definitely shouldn't be doing 13 hours per day at 53. I've, um, haven't stopped working with these flowers for about three weeks. Doing 60 hours in work and then coming back home to do these all night and getting up early in the morning to do them. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. Thank God I've nearly done all these flowers now. A lot of wreaths, Errol. How many do you think they're here? <laughs> I think about... I think they'll be about 75. The wreaths are finally finished and Errol has hired a man with a van to help transport them back home. My home in Wales is um, an ex-council house, three big bedrooms, yeah. a 26 foot long living room. It's just, I, I don't really know what to do about selling it. I don't know if anybody would want to travel about 34 miles to a city. Trying to get to work, because they've cut the buses and all that yeah. kind of thing. Since 2010, Local authorities in Wales have reduced or withdrawn a total of 259 bus services, leaving many thousands of people isolated. I'm so happy to be home. My beautiful village. Lovely, hey, 
It's really the community that I miss. People are so friendly here. <laughs> if anything happens to anybody, we all have collections and we all look after each other. And don't a Yeah. I'm selling out. I just can't believe how loyal these people are. I just want to cry. It's amazing that people haven't forgotten me. I am definitely coming back home next year and doing my wreath. While she's home in Wales, Errol wants to pay her respects to her family roots. Errol's great-grandfather and uncle used to mine for slate in these local quarries, part of a forgotten industry that once dominated the economy of North West Wales. The people have risked their lives to go to work around here. I used to love walking with my uncle Quill, who used to work in this quarry here. My mum, her granddad, he died on the rock face. When this quarry was closed down in the 1970s, many local people were left unemployed. The Welsh people have worked so hard to make Great Britain great, and in jobs that they were risking their lives for, um, coal, steel, slate. What are the young kids in Wales when they finish school gonna get now? Nothing. No chance of a job or anything. No, no bus services to get them to places. They've got basically nothing. If they want a job, they'll have to move. I think we've been forgotten, really. Errol can't afford to miss more than a couple of days' work. But before she returns to Liverpool, she's arranged to see her family for a pre-Christmas celebration. My childhood was spent with my grandmother. My grandma's my best buddy, and I've lost all that. I'm hoping my grandkids would recognise me after all these years. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon about it all. Yeah. This is your house, Harold? Yeah. And all my belongings. It's a bed sat, really, isn't it? But what can you do? I've got to go back to England. I'll have to be there for Christmas Day on my own. Wait, really, I could be here on this table with the whole of my family sitting around the table with me. Instead, I'm going to be on my own in Liverpool on Christmas Day. Shame. It's springtime in Scotland, and all Kevin's hard work is finally paying off. He's earning enough money to start saving a little for his son. But it's coming at a cost. The last time he and Zoe went on holiday was three years ago. Kevin, he's working most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, um, and the rest he's sleeping. When I first met him, I used to, that other day it was, I used to sit in the car with them while we delivered for the Chinese. So that's how we got to know each other. I always wanted somebody that was a hard worker. I got what I asked for, so I can't really moan about it, can I? And I see him here. But this hasn't worked to Kevin. It's not worked.
so where you go, that's up. <laughs> he told me that when he retires, he'll take me on holiday and that. But he'll never retire. Not in his blood. Kevin! Yeah. Yeah. To spend more time with his son, Dax, Kevin is taking Sunday morning off. You don't want to make the whole angry. <laughs> this is this is Kevin and all his glory. <laughs> Hot stuff, eh? <laughs> it allows Zoe to open the cafe early to prepare for the hungover breakfast orders. I don't drink, don't smoke, don't gamble. Don't, don't use go drugs, holiday. don't go on holiday, don't have a day off. <laughs> no drinking alcohol, nothing. I like a wee biscuit. Only a thing really in life that's it's quite nice. <laughs> so what, prepare the meal then? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rare to spend a lot of time together. We get wee bits here and there, but you've just got to go along with it. I feel this is the right path. Some people might think it's the wrong path, but I'm trying to provide a future for my boy. The way that the country's going today, I will probably buy my boy's house. And if you can save £2,000 per year, by the time that is 20, you have £40,000 saved up. You, know, you, you can buy a, a small flat for that. I worry that it's always going to be like this, that it's never going to change. Because when's it going to end? We're going to look back and realise it was whatever we wanted to achieve. We're still, we're still working for it. Maybe one day we'll go on a holiday or have a day out, I don't know. But not yet. It's a long road to get there, you know. It is not a crime to have a few quid in the bank, right? No, no, Thank you. Come on, have the inequality that we have. No, everyone should work harder. Just work harder. Do you know what? You work harder, people give you more money. It's a fantastic equation. After a month without any work from her agency, Bukala has finally received a letter from the Home Office. 20 years, 20, 20 years, Nick, 20 years, I waited 20 years. <laughs> you may already have received a letter from the Home Office. It is proof of your right to stay, work or study in the United Kingdom and may be used as a form of identification. <laughs> but I don't know how much relief I am that I don't have to go through this anymore. Oh my God. Don't see any fish. Hold it. Fish! Oh. Now she's a British resident, Bukala can work freely again, but she's desperate to make up for her lost earnings. So she's taking on as many extra shifts as she can. We need to talk about something important. Since I'm now allowed to work, my first shift is going to be on Saturday in the morning. At the moment, I'm not going to be doing night shift. I'm just going to be doing late shift. And you know most late shifts start in the afternoon. Now, yeah, when do they finish then? They shift finish, late shift finish at 10.30. 10.30, I'm going to be lying in bed by then. One step at a time. If I don't have to and I don't work, how do we make money? OK, you got a point. But then I'll finish by 3.30, so I'll be back by 2.30. So if we have to do stuff, we could do it together when I come back in the afternoon. At least we have the afternoon to ourselves. OK. Are you paying me attention? Yes. You're not a baby anymore. You are growing up. So start acting like one. I'm putting it on my Snapchat. <laughs> no smiling at all. By the time Venus is 30, I want her to have an easy, peaceful, simple life. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. 
I want her to be able to enjoy life to the best. I don't want you to be at my age, almost 40, and be going through what I'm going through now. Don't get me wrong, I'm not crying me a river because other people are going through us. But because other people are going through us, doesn't mean it is okay for my child that I slave over for her to now grow up and fall into the same category. Hell no. It needs to be better. And I'm telling her, and I will sing that song till she gets it into her head. Inflation has risen to its highest level in nearly six years. Wages aren't going up as fast as prices, so people... What we're announcing today, Mr Speaker, amounts to the biggest pay rise in almost ten years for around one million public sector workers across Britain. After eight years of austerity, it looks like a million NHS workers could be about to get a 6% pay rise over the next three years. Oh, there she is. Mm. <laughs> glad to see you. Oh, God, you've no idea how glad I am to be coming home. Honestly, I'm not lying. I've never known a day like it in my life. We've had this guy who's been specialed for the last two weeks, and then because we've been so short-staffed today, I was doubled up with him who's trying to climb out of bed every single minute, but also with a man who's had two cardiac arrests within 48 hours. So the care's been compromised all day because we're so bloody short staffed. I felt like telling, you know, Jeremy Hunt to stick his 6.5%. The 6.5% pay rise will come in over three years, but the rate of inflation for the retail price index is predicted to be over 9% during the same period. So there's no rise there if inflation's going up by 9.6%. Yeah. What's the point in that? It's well, not even on par with inflation. To me, it's just a PR stunt. My mum keeps saying she's going to win the lottery. We should bloody hurry up. She ain't my ticket. <laughs> time darling we're just trying to make the best of what we've got really stiff up a lip and all that you know something's gone tragically wrong something's amiss it's all getting worse we need to go back to basics My hours went down to 20, so I had no choice but to leave. It's the same everywhere. Nobody seems to worry if you can survive or not. Never, ever heard of such nonsense in my life. A zero-hour contract. Fucking homeless again. Hopefully it won't be here as long this time, you know? So pick yourself up, get forward and just carry on with life. Just make it better. I'm hoping them, that the kids be able to go and live their dream, do what they want. And I want them to have better than me. Not, uh, you don't want your kids repeating your life, do you? You want them to do, you want to do better things, you know? Getting paid for something they really enjoy.